Welcome back to my channel, my friends. I don't think I was a very happy person six or seven years ago. I don't think I was very confident. I don't think I really knew where I was going or if I was doing things right or if I was being a good friend to people. I was very self-conscious and always felt a little bit lost. I just felt like other people had things figured out and I was just there in the corner like, I don't. I don't really know what I'm doing. And over the last six or seven years, thanks to a therapist that I trust with my life, thanks to graduating, thanks to quitting jobs, thanks to starting businesses I never thought I would start, thanks to failing with other businesses, becoming friends with and meeting super successful people, embarrassing myself a ton and making a ton of mistakes, I feel like a completely different person. And there are things I've realized that have made me a completely different person. And I guess it could have been nice to know, you know, six or seven years ago. So this is me wishing I could just kind of go back in time and give myself a few answers, a little bit of advice. The first thing I didn't realize was that nobody has their shit figured out. They really don't, but I definitely thought they did. All the way through university, when I was doing my PhD as well, when I started my YouTube channel, when I was tutoring, I always felt like I looked at other people and it just felt like to them, the world was so much clearer. They had great balance between social life, taking care of themselves, doing well in their jobs. And for me, like that was just impossible. Like there was something always had to give and most of the time more than one thing had to give. And I just didn't understand how the world seemed so clear to them, like how they could get the balance so right. And if it wasn't everyone, it was at least the people that were doing super well. They just seemed like they were collected, they had clear thoughts, they were at peace, they were happy, they were successful at their job or their education or whatever it was. They just had a really nice balance. And I had that feeling for years and years that things and life just came easier to them and I was just always going to struggle. And it wasn't until like a couple of years into making my YouTube videos that I realized how insanely wrong I was. And as my YouTube channel grew, I got to meet incredible creators, creators that I've always looked up to much bigger than myself. I've always thought these are guys, are, these guys are killing it. And brands, brands too, brands that we've all heard of that are multi-billion company, multi-billion pound companies, super successful. Of course, I've always put them on a pedestal. Of course, these guys have their shit together. And then you start consulting for them and you lift the curtain and you take a little peek and that's all it takes. It's just a little peek. And that whole idea that I had, that everyone had their shit figured out and it was so much easier for everyone, just crumbled down. Everyone is trying to figure it out. Everyone's trying to figure out if they're performing in the right way, doing the right thing, being the right girlfriend or boyfriend or business partner or seeing their family enough or taking care of their health. They can't get the right product in the right place at the right time or have to redesign a product in the very last minute because it wasn't the right one. It's a shit show. Everyone is struggling with something. And in most cases, it's more than one thing. And these are companies and people that you know, not not just in fitness, outside of fitness too. The world is full of people just trying to figure it out. Me included, I'm in that. <laughs> Sign me, I was the first person on that list. You know what? I'm probably never gonna have my shit fully figured out. It's not gonna happen. And I shouldn't wait and put things off waiting for my life to be nice and compartmentalized and organized and settled. It's not gonna happen. I should just keep pushing forward. Feeling like everyone else has their lives together and they're in control is actually really intimidating. It makes you feel like the world is just full of people who are nailing it, when in reality, those people at the top might think and look like us, but they just don't let that intimidation or any intimidation whatsoever get to them. They know that they're not gonna have everything perfect. They know that their shit's not gonna be together. They're okay with it. They keep learning, they keep practicing, and they go through it. Next up is that failure is the route to success. Honestly, like I was 
terrified of failing. I never wanted to be bad at anything. I never wanted to get a wrong answer. I never wanted to be bad at sport. I never wanted to do public speaking because to me, public speaking, if I failed, was a very real time, live, public failure. And it genuinely terrified me. I never wanted people to think that I was bad at something. I think that's probably a big reason why I was an overachiever because I was just so terrified of being bad at something, of people thinking that I was bad. And the problem with that mindset is that it stops you from trying and that stops you from learning. And the truth is that actually the world doesn't really care whether or not you fail. They might be interested. They might be like, oh, how'd it go? Have the conversation 30 seconds later. Do they care? No. Are they gonna do anything about it? No, they don't care. And I find that really comforting. The world just keeps moving on. Literally just a few weeks ago, I had my ambassador shoot with Lululemon. There was a crew of about 20 people. The camera was on me. They were asking me interview questions and I, I couldn't talk. Like I genuinely couldn't talk. I, my mind went completely blank. I knew what I wanted to say, but my mouth wasn't saying it. And I was embarrassed and like hyper aware in the moment as well, which meant that I was just sweating from everywhere, top lip, under the arms, back. Everything was just profusely sweating and I just, it was just really hard to watch. And I've got footage of it and we've got great audio coverage of it. And there were 20 people who I didn't really know who I was trying to impress. And it just, it really did not go well. And even before that, I launched a business two years ago. Now, <laughs> the whole story of it is actually wild. Like it feels like something out of a movie. I look back and I can't believe I just experienced that whole experience. But long story short, I put in most of my life savings. I was working 16 to 18 hour days, seven days a week for 10 months straight. Everything I had, I put into that business and it failed and I couldn't make it work and I couldn't make it work out. But I'm so much better now at business than I was two years ago. I'm even less scared when I public speak and then to be honest, that was a very public failure. People were filming on their phones. We've got beautiful 4K footage and like crisp, crisp audio of me just <laughs> messing all my words up. Um, but I'm okay with it because in the end, no one actually cares. The only person that benefited really from it is me. I'm the one that wins, if anything, because I'm the one that knows how to get better. I'm the one that learned, okay, don't do this next time, or you need to be in this frame of mind, or whatever it is. I'm the one that won from me failing. And that's why I didn't realize that failing is exactly how you get better. And now that I failed so many times, I'm not scared of failing. I'm not scared. I didn't die. It didn't hurt me. It can't hurt me. The world doesn't actually care what I should be scared of and I am scared of is not realizing what I'm capable of, not actually pushing myself to the point of failure so that I keep improving and I keep learning. That's what I'm actually scared of. The next thing I wish I could tell myself is to take charge of your life or the world will do it for you. Like growing up, I was such a people pleaser. And to be honest, by default, I think I kind of am. Like I want to make people happy. I want people to like me. I hate confrontation. Even thinking about confrontation, like my hands get sweaty. Like I, I would just rather everyone just be chill and just be peaceful. For years, like I just couldn't say no. I just felt like I, if I needed to say no, I needed a full justification explanation. And yet when the roles were reversed and one of my friends needed to say no to me, I never thought anything of it. I was just like, yeah, that's cool, don't worry. I don't mind. I had a massive double standard. And that meant that I just wasn't good at protecting my time, my space, my peace. I just wasn't good at setting boundaries for myself. Like everyone else's wants and needs came before mine. And I'm not saying don't be a good friend. I'm just saying that from years of struggling to say no, I found that the world will just find a million ways to just fill your time. And I think it's good to help when you can, but there's only so much reacting you can do. Like having goals and respecting your own goals and what you're working towards requires you to be proactive and not reacting to everything around. Reacting to everything around, I always refer to as being a little leaf in the wind. You just get blown in every single direction. You can't get anywhere. And trust me when I say this, I 
hated saying no the first few times. When I was at uni, I was president of the triathlon club and there was a point where the team no longer wanted to be coached by the coaches that we had. And I had to break the news. And that's really hard for me because I'm the people pleaser. I like to keep the peace and I want everyone to be happy. And it's the same with what I do now. Even now, when I have to end partnerships because they don't align with my values, I have to say no, but I'm thinking about it for weeks. I've had the conversation a million times with Mario. Mario gets bored of it. He's like, just do it already, will you? Just stop putting it off. I still find it hard to say no, but I have to say no. Sometimes saying no is actually the best thing for everyone. And if I didn't learn to say no, then I could just say bye-bye to so many of the things that I want for myself, they just wouldn't be happening. And one of my big life goals is to create a scholarship where I can help underprivileged children go to university and give them a shot at achieving their dreams. And that's a big goal and I need to respect that goal. The same way that I respect other people's goals, I need to respect it myself and I need to learn how to say no because otherwise it's not happening. And I have to be okay with not being able to please everyone all the time. I'll be honest, like this is still one I'm working on. Like I'm working on saying no and being comfortable with saying no. I don't know if I'll ever get there, but at least I'm aware of it. And at least I know that that's what I have to do. The next thing I wanna talk about is to challenge your beliefs often. Well, when I was 21, I started seeing a therapist and he is kind of now a mentor for me. He never told me what to think or told me what was right. He just made sure that I was never thinking in a black and white way. Especially when it came to my beliefs about myself, what I'm capable of, whether I can do something or I can't. He always, always challenged that. Now the way he explained it to me was that over the course of time as I was growing up, my beliefs about myself, my place in the world, become set like a frozen block of ice. And that his job, which eventually became my job, was to regularly thaw out that block of ice. Over time, I think we all settle into our beliefs of where we are in this world, what we're capable of, what's doable, what's realistic, or where our place is in the world. I think things like, oh, I can't pull that outfit off, or I don't wanna rock the boat. <laughs> I'm people pleaser over here. If I want to create that change in my life and I wanna realize what I'm capable of, I have to realize that loads of these limits are just bullshit. That's the main reason why I regularly set challenges to myself that regularly break the, my own beliefs around what I'm capable of. Like I set myself that 24 hour run challenge where I ran for 24 hours straight with barely any practice, not to show to myself that I can run, but to remind myself that if I'd said I couldn't do it, I would have been completely making it up. And I'm probably doing that in other areas of my life as well. The next thing I wish I knew is that you don't need to fit in. I'm gonna put it out there. I'm kind of weird. I used to wish to fit in so badly. I tried so hard. My quirkiness made it really hard for me to make friends. I literally used to just bounce around from friendship group to friendship group. And for a lot of the time I felt quite alone. Even today, like there are creators and brands in the health and fitness industry that don't like me because I'm difficult. I know I'm difficult. I have certain beliefs and I can't bend on them, which makes me difficult to work with. And there was a time where I wished I would fit in so badly just to make it easier to make friends. But I realized that if my intentions are good and they're clean, then I should just do what feels right to me and not feel bad about it. Being an outsider, the only ways I've contributed actually made a contribution is from being an outsider. Being the same as everyone else, there's nothing for me to contribute. I'm just the same as everyone else. So just embrace it. Be weird. Be fucking out of this world. I think the biggest difference to who I was 10 years ago is that I finally feel peace with not fitting in. I'm genuinely completely okay about it. I don't need people to understand me or to fully get where I'm coming from. And that brings me on to happiness. There is one person that will be with me for the rest of my life, that has been with me for all of my life so far, that knows my darkest, deepest, subconscious thoughts, they're with me even in my dreams. It's me. <laughs> Closely followed by Mario, but it's me. And there's a quote I love that says that peace is happiness at rest. And 
I think that's such a nice way to put it because I'm not always going to be actively happy. But in the quiet times, is my mind at peace? And for a long time, I don't think it was. I think I just allowed way too much noise to happen. Like caring way too much about what other people thought about me, caring too much about things that I wouldn't care about in a year's time, always needing to be the best. And I think I found peace by realizing that there are very few things that I, me, deeply care about. Most of the things I thought would make me happy actually end up getting kind of old. So I've tried to be really truthful and honest with myself and be ruthlessly honest with myself about what actually makes me happy. And a lot of the time it goes against what would give me people's validation. Like I love spending time with my friends and family. That actually makes me really happy. Things that don't make me happy are things like buying too many things, just things, just things, like buying lots of material things doesn't actually make me happy in the long term. My PhD that I was doing to impress everyone, I just wanted the doctor at the start of my name, I wanted to go to a prestigious school. All of those things, deep down, didn't actually make me happy. And even on YouTube, some of you guys might have noticed something that I do for my peace and happiness, which is that I shut down videos that are going too viral on my channel. And I get comments being like, where'd that video go? I was gonna share it. Did it get taken down through copyright? And it's just, it's me pressing the private button. Um, honestly, it makes me feel good doing that because I wanna come on here and be open and honest and I wanna feel close with you. And I feel like if I grew too quickly or if I would rather have 1.5 million friends than 5 million subscribers, that's just how it is. And that sounds weird to some people because they're like, just get the number up. Like more, more is more like why would you not want to be more famous or have more social status and that doesn't bring me happiness like i feel really happy and i feel peaceful when i know my audience i know you guys you guys are my friends and i feel comfortable around you guys and that's why that's why i do that and i guess i my past self would have never understood that many creators don't understand that but that's my reasoning behind it and it makes me feel really happy so these are the things that I feel have made the biggest difference to me changing as a person. Don't get me wrong, I am not perfect by any means at any of these. Like, I don't think I'll ever be perfect at them. I still have to regularly remind myself that no one has their shit together, that you need to constantly be failing to be pushing the boundaries of what you're capable of, that you have to take charge of your life and be okay with saying no, otherwise the world's just gonna push you about and I'm just gonna be that little leaf blowing in the wind. And that I have to constantly challenge my beliefs and I don't need to be understood. I just need to fully understand truly deeply what makes me happy. They've made a massive difference to how I see the world and how I see myself in the world. And I love you guys so much. Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button to join our incredible family. And I will see you guys very soon. I love you. Bye.